Hi there, so I'm just going to run through a quick overview of how the Connectis app works and uh, how you can complete your um, your visits on here. So once you've logged in with the uh, username or your email address uh, that's stored into the system, alongside the PIN uh, that you'll have been given uh, by the office staff members, uh, you'll just see an appointments button here. So if you click on that, it will show you your current appointments that you've got for the day. If you, um, the app will do an update every morning, so it's always best to log in uh, whilst you're at home on your Wi-Fi because it'll just check if there's any new information and make sure that that's downloaded uh, once it is. If you do that on your Wi-Fi, then you'll find that you get much less data usage whilst you're out and about as well. And if you do think that any visits are missing or anything, just simply pull down from the top of the app and it will actually do a refresh just to make sure everything's on there. If you need to look at future days, so if you're wanting to have a look at your rotor for tomorrow, you can just simply click on the next day uh, and have a look at what tomorrow looks like and the day after that. And there'll be as many appointments in here as what have been allocated to you um, in your rostering system as well. So what you'll see on each appointment is the time that you're due to be there and then the address and the uh, customer or service user that you're going to see. The app will only let you log in once you've actually got to the property. So it does a GPS check to make sure you're there. And that's just to make sure that that service user's um, sensitive information is only being accessed when it needs to be. So if I try to log into this one here, for example, what we'll see is is an error to say that I'm not allowed to log into that yet. Um, if there is ever any problems with your GPS, they can always you can always get a backup PIN number from the office, which will let you bypass that GPS check. So if you ever do get to the property and you see that warning telling you that you need a backup PIN, uh, just simply call your office. They'll be able to give you that backup pin once they've verified you're at the correct place um, and you'll be able to log in normally. But usually you, you, you can get into a property fine. So, for example, I'm now um, around close by to 7 St. Mary's Rise here. So I'm just going to log into Frederick's visit. It's going to do that same GPS check. And I'm, uh, I'm inside that property, but I'm quite close by to a window, so it's managed to get that GPS check, no problem at all. If your care provider stores any information like key safe um, details on the forms that you may need to use, we have made sure that you can log into the app just from outside the property. So if there's any information that you need um, from that appointment to get in, uh, you'll be able to access that from just outside the property within about 50 meters. So on my example here, we've got some service user information. So this is what the forms are that, that my um, demo agency has on here and, and your um, your managers will have will have kind of chosen what documents that they'd want you to read when you're at a property on their system. And just to show an example, the first time that you ever log into one of these, you'll see these little notifications on all of these documents, which is just warning you that you need to read them because it's recognized you haven't read them yet. It's the first time that you've logged in uh, and you just need to read those. If um, if you've already read them, they'll just come up normally like these ones here. But if there's ever any changes on it, so if they, um, if the team update a care plan in the office, the notification will appear again the next time you log in, just warning you that there's a new version of that care plan now, which is my example here. So if I click on that, it gives me a little warning to tell me what part of that has changed. I just click accept and then I can have a look through. That notification has pointed me to tell me that the health conditions have changed, so I know which part of the document I'm reading. But I can have a look through the rest if I need to. There we go. Your organ, your um, your managers may have like kind of separated the documents into easy read parts, and to get to each section of the care plan or the document, you just simply click on that, and then you can go through to the different versions of it. So if I just show you on our risk assessment, I've got a few different 
risk assessments within one document. So it opens up on the manual handling one for my example. And if I click on that menu bar, you'll see I've got mobility and risk levels and actions. And it just means I can quickly get to the different sections of that document there. So that's all nice and easy to read. And because I've read that care plan change now, it's let me go into the logbook. And the logbook is where you're going to record your activities for the day so so what what you're doing whilst you're there and it's also got instructions for what you're helping with as part of that support plan so i've got my example logbook here which i'm assisting out of bed and if there's if there's nothing more complicated than that you've helped with it you can just simply mark it as completed so we can mark that as completed Observe going down the stairs. If there's anything that you haven't done or that wasn't able to be completed as part of the care plan, you can leave it empty and then it just will uh, will show that that part of the support plan wasn't able to be done on that occasion. If you want to, uh, you can also write comments on there. So you'll see that on all of these tasks here, you can write a comment specific to that task. So let's just pop a little one on here, just saying Fred needed help downstairs today so I assisted if you need the office to know and they'll they'll go through kind of what 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 they regard as an urgent message and what they regard as just information that you need to record on the app but anything that needs to be urgently alerted to the office you can just click on mark as urgent and it will actually raise it as an alert to them in the office I'm not going to do it on this case so we'll just add that so you can see we've added that but on his task it's observe going downstairs not assist so I've not completed this as it is in the care plan we'll provide with breakfast we'll make sure he's got a drink left with him and then we've got a mar chart here as well so your care organization will have decided what buttons are on here if you ever forget what the abbreviation means, you can always just click on what's this and it just brings up a key. So mine means supported, not required, refused and other. So I could just say that we've supported with Ramapril. E45 cream, so this works for PRN medications as well. If your care organization have, uh, have attached uh, body maps to any creams that you're supporting with, you can just simply click on those little thumbnails and it just brings it up as a full image. So you've got an, an accurate visual picture of where you need to apply that cream. So we're just going to pop not required in this case. And then paracetamol, let's say the, that we're supposed to give Fred paracetamol every morning you know in this case it's not PRN it's kind of it's required for his pain relief on a day-to-day -day basis but he doesn't want it today so he's refused it we can just pop that as well and in this case I'm just going to make this urgent so I want the team to know that he's refused his meds today um, Fred has refused this medication I'll mark that as urgent and you'll see that any comments I put in urgent appear in red here we've got a little well-being status so you can just give the um, give the team in the office and your managers a snapshot on how Frederick is on a on a visit by visit basis uh, so we'll pop that he's in the middle today and then you can just write your comments, which is where you would usually write all of your comments in, you know, your activity log or your um, or your log book or your, your daily log records. All of that information can just go in here as well. And you just simply click submit when you've put your comment in. If you notice that you've forgotten to write something down or you want to write something extra, you can always do that as well. So you can write as many of these comments as you want. There we go. So I've just put a couple of quick examples in there, um, but your managers will kind of have a have a, have more of an idea of exactly what type of records that you'd be needing to record in this information here. Once I'm happy with all of that, 
Um, so I just need to mark that as completed. Looks like I'd forgotten to do that. I can see I've got everything in here that I want to. That's all looking good. Now I can just simply click complete. It's going to ask me if I'm certain. So if I suddenly realize, oh, actually there is something else I wanted to do. So maybe on our E45 cream, we've actually decided we just need to make a little note and you'll notice the add comment button has disappeared. So you just uncomplete it and then you can add your comment in. So we're just going to put Fred skin not dry today. Just giving the, uh, the team as much information as we can, which is great. So we can now click that again. And then we're going to mark it as complete. So this time we will complete. And again, it's going to do another GPS check just to make sure I'm still at that property and recording these notes when I'm actually with that service user, which is very important. So I'm just going to click complete. If you ever have any trouble with this GPS check, just make sure you're close by to a window and that will give it more opportunity to, um, to get um, a better and more accurate GPS signal. So there we go, that's completed. And that visit now disappears from my list of visits to do. So these will just gradually disappear uh, as, and w as and when you've done these visits. And then you can move on to your, on to your next one. So I'll just quickly show you an example of, a, of some more information that we've come now. So if I was going to Fred's evening call, um, which we'll just log into, Something else that's really important for uh, for you guys is is just being able to access kind of what's been happening on a visit by visit basis, and that's really easy for you to do. You just simply click on previous care notes, and as we can see here, we've got the T call. I can go back. I can have a look at the morning call here. So that's the call that we've just completed there, and you've got a version of every visit that's been done up to two weeks so you could go back and have a look at two weeks of notes if you needed to but you can always have a look you know if you're going later on in the day and you want to have a, an idea of what happened in the morning you can always see the clear like kind of notes that that someone has put down you know we can see that the paracetamol was refused on the morning visit and we've got a note here to say what was what was kind of recorded on that as well so it's really easy to get to those um, extra notes if you need to. So there you go. That just gives you a quick overview of how the system works and, and how you can complete um, a visit on here. Uh, if you have any other questions about this, then just simply get in touch with your managers and they'll be able to help you further. Thanks ever so much for listening.